In my last short session on Vertex, we talked about creating a very simple Hello World using Create HTTP Server in Vertex. And if you were with me on that last episode, you'll remember this code here where we defined a new vertical call that extends abstract vertical, uses the Create HTTP Server, sets up a request callback handler, and tells that server to listen on port 8080. Now, this is somewhat useful, but what happens when you need to handle multiple different paths in your HTTP request? If we were going to do things using just a standard HTTP server and a callback handler, we would have to put all sorts of logic here, like if request dot path dot starts with API v1 hello And then we would have to put our logic in here. As you can see, this could get really messy really quick with a lot of if then else or case statements or switch statements. That gets very messy. What we can do instead is Vertex provides us with an extra module that we can add to make it easier to write web applications. So let's open up our POM file and go up here to our dependencies and you'll see that because we use the Ver Vertex Maven plugin it set up our dependency management to pull in a, a POM file as our dependency chain. So we can add any Vertex dependency right here without having to specify the versions. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste Vertex Core and change the second instance to Vertex Web. VS Code is going to say, hey, you want me to synchronize your class path? And we're going to say always. That way we don't get prompted for that every time. And then over here in our main vertical, instead of just using create HTTP server and request handler callbacks, we can create a Vertex router. The Vertex router gives us the capability to set up different callback handlers for different paths in our HTTP request. So for example, if we just wanted a path to handle our standard hello world, we could say router.get, so we're saying that it's an HTTP get verb, and we're going to our API version one hello path, and we're gonna say, that we attach a handler to it. Now instead of just a request object, when you use a Vertex router, you get a routing context object. And a routing context object, for all intents and purposes, has a request object in it, but many other capabilities as well. And so we can say context.quest.response.end, and this should look very similar to what we had before, but now we've limited it to a single HTTP path, and we can specify other paths, and we can also specify ways of handling path parameters. So for example, API uh, v1 hello, and if we want a path parameter, we put a colon and we say name, for example and we attach a handler to that. And again, taking a routing context object, we can say context.request.response.end, and inside of this end, we can say string.format, hello, percent %s, exclamation point. Now, inside of that context object, we can extract the path parameter. So we can say string name equals cdx dot path param name. And we'll extract that name parameter out of the path. And then inside of our string format, we can specify that name to be included in our string. Now previously we saw that we would use the vertex instance and create an HTTP server and potentially options. 
and then we would attach a request handler, and in that request handler we wrote our logic. Now instead, we're going to pass that request handling through to our router and tell the HTTP server to listen on port 88. And again, saving our file, we see that everything recompiles and redeploys. Well, except our Vertex router is not in the class path because we've modified the POM file, so we're going to restart. And it should recompile at this point. And we can then switch over to our browser. And now, without anything in the path, if we hit refresh, we're going to get page not found because we've attached those paths to specific methodologies. So we would actually need to put API v1 hello to get hello vertex world. And then if I wanted to personalize it, I would say hello slash Devon, and it would say hello Devon. That's our second step in writing vertex web applications with REST APIs. I hope you'll join me for more videos in this series as we go forward on this journey.